I'm in San Diego's Balboa Park, and today I'm going to explore the abandoned Starlight Bowl and the San Diego Air and Space Museum right here. Beautiful front building. On the left, the Starlight Bowl. There's a sign out front that says, stay tuned for our 65th season. And that season never happened. And has since then just been uh, sitting here in the park. This place is very special for a few reasons. And as with most of the other videos that I've created, Tennessee Wonderland, the abandoned resort in Cayman Brack, Tennessee Mountain View, there's going to be an ending to this video that's going to have a lot of interesting history. This is the main front area where people would stay before they would go in and see a show out front here at the beginning of this beautiful day as the sun rises right now. Let's first explore over to the left. The plaque out front. There's a door. And then this right here looks like uh, only opens from the other side. The sun's just starting to rise. Here's the office. Again, I'm assuming. Yeah. Here's another door. Also locked as we thought it would be. And here's the third gate. Let's look over here. Walking around the building now to see what else we can find on the outside. There's a light that I noticed. Also 2722 right there on the concrete. Probably house lights for the theater. And I'm sure Someone could tell me exactly what this is. Nice and quiet here, early before 7 a.m. on a holiday, Labor Day, 2015. And here's our best view so far. Wow, there are weeds. Um, different kind of plants growing all inside and if you remember looking at the painting out front the look of the theater here just changed significantly from 1935 this whole green box look um, is very different from the shell look that we saw on the painting from 1935 in the back there on the left you can see that it says starlight musical theater there's still lights down there that are hung. Oh, I just saw two rabbits. Oh, three rabbits. Here on the back side of the theater. The view of the theater from here. It's just like a big green box. I see a middle spot. It should be easier to get down than uh, right here. And then from here you can see downtown San Diego and the bright and beautiful sun. So let's make our way down here. This is kind of steep. Oh, there goes a rabbit. I'm going to try to stay quiet. So from here, before I get all the way down, you can see 
this is some sort of backstage area where maybe they would paint set pieces and props up there and let them dry on that deck. And then, this is very overgrown right here. And that's the entryway straight ahead where buses for traveling theater groups and bands would park their, uh, their long trailer. I'll zoom in even manually here just so you can get a better look. As you can see, as I zoom back out, it's way overgrown up front here. Lots of tall grass. We'll get through this first. I think I walked through about 45 spider webs getting down here. This is interesting. I didn't see these. There are two like cargo containers just sitting here in the back. And then as we swoop around, there's a pole sticking out of the ground right here. Uh, we found the treasure. A little honey mustard sauce packet. Oh, and look what someone's been doing down here. Someone's been having some fun. Up a bit higher now. Now we got a good view of this right here. Looks like there's paint all over one of the benches on the right. And that there's a place where they locked up certain materials in the back there. It's kind of hard to see, but this is an area where like, I'm assuming stage hands and backstage people would kind of hang out and people who were constructing the sets and painting would uh, do a lot of their work and spend a lot of their time together. All right, now for the fun part, getting back up. I was master carp and second electrician for Starlight Theater or San Diego Civic Light Opera for four or five years before they went bankrupt starting in 2005. Uh, unfortunately, we, when the recession hit in 2008, they just couldn't stay afloat and have collapsed and though there is a drive to bring it back periodically by people it's just it's not going to happen it's too dilapidated and the water has gotten in and just destroyed the whole backstage area it used to be great i started coming to starlight when i was but a kid i lived just over in golden hill and you'd only see seven or eight planes per night come over and everybody on stage would freeze their big thing was to catch people kissing or doing something silly and try to catch them in a freeze motion but towards the end, that was one of the issues, was 30 or 40 planes going over in an hour constantly. So we, what we had was an airplane spotter in the house, on the house side left, that could see past the theater, and they would do a yellow, red, and green light. And there's lights set up so that the audience couldn't see it, but the actors could, and so they'd hit them with a the yellow as a warning, and then a red light to freeze, and then as the plane went back over, they'd hit a green light, and then everything would take off again. Great bands have played here, like you said, Rolling Stones, Stevie Ray Vaughan, the Ramones, lots of old punk shows, just a whole lineup of great rock concerts that have come through here. It'd be a fantastic concert venue. There's no noise restrictions here. They could get their out the beer and wine license back and have run three nights apart or two nights of rock and roll shows and then, you know, a Sunday matinee or show for kids and families. It'd be fantastic. When I first started working here it was in 89 and 90, we couldn't leave the theater a after the show for a couple hours and we had what was known as summer camp where we'd all sit back and just wait and have a good time and party and play music and stuff because the parking lots were too full. That's how many people were coming. We'd have a poll going to see how many came and it was, you know, 3,000 people, 2,500, 3,000 people coming, having picnics in the park and coming to see the shows. There's been so many attempts to turn it into a rock and roll venue, but Starlight was struggling so hard to keep it as a theater and the, the attendance dropped and as attendance dropped they unfortunately raised the prices of the tickets trying to compensate and to be able to pay everybody instead of lowering them and luring more people in to come see it. And the uh, scaffolding that is right here in front is how we set and ran the cable and hung the lights and focused the lights. 
And we would do that in between, usually after 10.30 p.m. and go until about four o'clock in the morning because it would be after rehearsal and we had to do it at night because of we needed darkness. That's where we would set up the soundboard. And then right behind it, we'd also set up the spotlights. Milt Woodruff was president of our local and sent me and a couple guys down here to work for the summer and said, hey, go down there. You know, you can make a living at this if you enjoy it. Here's a look backstage, inside there, and down the ramp, you can see there's a lot of overgrown weeds and grass that hasn't been cut in a long time, just as with all the other parts of this part of Balboa Park. Here right next to the gym, these are probably the other bathrooms right here. 